Okay, we got our bike lowered back down so we can go ahead and get our handlebars on. It'll be a lot easier to move it off the lift with handlebars. It's kind of hard to steer it with no handlebars. Now, you may notice we have these giant gaping holes in here where we used to have rubber baby buggy bumpers. Well, we're gonna do away with those. We're gonna use this nifty solid riser bushing kit from Lowbrow Customs. This way, your handlebars will be nice and firm. None of this wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So if you have an older bike and it's wiggling, more than likely your rubber chingas are wore out, put a set of these in there. Welcome to Saturday Sportster. Woo! Let's get going here. Top one just drops in the hoe. Like that. Bada bing. Like so. And look how they go, they go nicely with the theme of our black motorcycle. And the bottom is designed for a socket head. Well, in keeping with the shiny theme of the motorcycle, I've got these colony socket head bolts. And these are handlebar riser Allen bolt kit. Now, it's very important when picking out riser bolts, irregardless of whether they have a hex head or a socket head. Since these are a socket head, I'm not going to be putting lock washers on them. On a stock bike, it's important that you have lock washers. On this one, I'm gonna use some red Loctite, but you'll see how this works. Fits in there like it at, real nice and clean. And this is gonna get installed in the bottom and then the bolt comes up through there to put your riser on. Now, anytime you're changing risers or stuff like this, you wanna make darn sure you've got the proper amount of thread engagement into your riser. So we're gonna be using the stock risers in order to go with our black theme. And there's nothing wrong with these stock risers. They're gonna be fine for our, our job. So you can see that once we get it threaded in there, you'll see that I'm using all the threads in the riser, which is a good thing. So let's get some red Loctite and go ahead and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna put these up in there and we can't tighten them until we put the bars in and the top clamp on, otherwise it'll just spin around like that and then it might not be lined up when it's tight. So we gotta kinda maybe work fast. I mean, the red Loctite will take a few minutes to set up but um, we don't want to screw around too long with that red Loctite on there until we get our bars on. Okay. And here's our top clamp. Once again, stock part, shiny bolts. For this project, we are going to use Lowbrow Customs Scrambler Bar. Scrambler for a tracker. And they are, in keeping with the theme of the motorcycle, our favorite color, once again, black. Yay. They have kind of a satin finish on them which is fine. You gotta break up the black a little bit. And they have some really awesome knurling on there, which will be really good just in case we might decide to take this bike off the road. You don't want your bars to wiggle around in your clamps and knurling will assure you that that doesn't happen.
Now I've got some washers on these front ones because this eventually is gonna get the speedometer mount, but I'm not gonna put it on just yet until we get our wiring situated. So for now, I'm just gonna tighten these down and we can just pop them out back out later. Uh, it's important that you take a look at your clamp while you're doing this and make sure that you're tightening it even front to rear for the gap. Don't be alarmed if there's a gap left over. If there was no gap, it probably wouldn't get tight. And the other thing you wanna pay attention to, it's not super critical right at this point in time because we're nowhere near done with the bike, but you wanna look at where your, your knurling is also a good guide to make sure your bars are centered side to side. Now right now, that looks pretty darn close. And you wanna get it right the first try because if you don't, especially on a black bar, if you have to loosen this back up and move it this way or this way, it's liable to leave a mark on the bar. So you wanna get that right the first try. And then we're just gonna snug these up. And then we'll go back and tighten the bottom ones. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a tight fit there. I have two different length fasteners. Once again, chrome dealio. Nothing wrong with it. It's just a little tight. It does fit, it's okay. Okay, got those snugged up. Now we'll go ahead and tighten the ones that we wouldn't be able to tighten. If the bars weren't on there. Okay. Woo, yay. Got some bars on there. And the other thing I did, I kind of put them at the angle. I, I personally like them. Well, probably once it's all said and done and the seat's on and the tank's on, you could sit on the bike and rock them forward or backwards to get them in the sweet spot where you like them. All right. I think before we go ahead and turn the bike around, uh, let's go ahead and pop the new clutch cable on. I'm really not feeling this clutch cable. It's braided. It's rusty, it's funky, I don't like it. Let's get rid of it. All right, in order to uh, change the clutch cable, we're gonna need to remove this awesome 100 year anniversary cover. And it looks like the screws are kind of rusty and crusty. We're also gonna be loosening it here. And uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, loosen the cable first, like so. And I can see that this, these could be an issue. I, I went ahead and loosened this one, but they're, uh, they're pretty crusty and the, this does not want to go in there. So I'm just tapping that in there. These are 530 seconds Allen. Oh, got lucky again. Where normally there are torques. Oh wait, there is a Torx on the bottom. Okay. So they must've lost one of these uh, cheap cheap chrome that came with the cover. I'll have to look through my collection of stuff and uh, we'll get some Torx ones on there, the correct ones. And now I do need a, a T27. Hang on one sec. Okay, so we got lucky, they all came loose. See, that's the proper fastener for that location. These other ones are came with this cover. This is an optional cover from the year 2003 because this is an anniversary model. Incidentally, this is probably one of the most fun covers you'll ever remove from your Sportster and I'll, you'll see why in a sec here. They put this weird flat O-ring in here and they didn't give it much of a groove. Hey, look out, Jesus, mother of God, there we go. There she is, look at her. She's already jumping out of the tiniest groove they ever put on there and there's nothing on this side to locate it. Another awesome design by Harley Davidson. Here's the seal. 
Here's where your cable hooks on. We are gonna have to remove this Jenga. So you're gonna pop off this nut with a spring. That's gonna go on there at the end of this program, like so. We're gonna go ahead and discombobulate this in order to remove the cable. This is your called a, a ball and ramp assembly. And you'll see why in a sec here. This will also give us the opportunity to adjust the clutch after we put the new cable on. There we go, there's that one. And remember, it went on this way, not this way, okay? Then you're just gonna pop this whole chinga right on out of there like a so. And then when you turn it, you can remove this part of it Well, you can just take the end of the cable out like that. Now, if we open this up, you can see what's going on here. Well, we can't open it without taking the clip off, but you can see there's three ball bearings in there and ball and ramp, yada, yada. Now we can go ahead and unthread the cable the rest of the way. Uh, keep in mind, there is an O-ring on this cable, so don't forget to put your O-ring on the new cable or it may leak fluid here. Oh, look, here's something else that has something to do with that goofy anniversary nonsense. Oh boy. And I think maybe we'll just look around the shop here and see if we can't come up with a stock cover or something different. Not that I don't like that one, but you know, that's kind of cheesy. When you're reinstalling this, do not over tighten this hex or you will break the end off. Ask me how I know that. All right, I'm just gonna spin it out like this because if you do it with a wrench, you'll be here all year. And it'll go back in the same same way it came out. So basically, I'm letting this whole piece of the cable turn. And there's our O-ring that I was speaking of right there. Okay. So off. And since this stuff here, oh, wait a minute. We'll show you that too. Where'd we go? There she is. And this, my friends, is why I get so many calls about the blade levers that we sell that say they're for like 1930 something to 1940 something. Here's how a modern Sportster clutch cable and majority of big twin Evo. Uh, well, at any rate, it doesn't want to go back there, but we'll show you in a sec here. This little plastic chinga goes in that hole. This is what the end of your clutch cable looks like if you've never taken your clutch cable off your bike. It's got that funky loop on there. If you look at the blade lever, it's not set up for this funky loop at all. So quit ordering those blade levers for your modern Sportster. It's not gonna work. Uh, this part's pretty crappy looking. I actually dug through my collection of spare parts and I have a, a better one that doesn't need to be painted or anything. We do will need the pin here. And while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and put a set of these nifty Lowbrow Customs blade lever. She says she'll fit 96 to 2016. Comes with a new pin. So you're not gonna need that one. But once again, we want everything to be black. Ah uh, yes, before we put our cable on, let's go ahead and change out these screws so they match the other side. Again, colony to the rescue. And you can see, and this is the primary cover polished Allen, 94 to 03. Looks like we got two lengths for the cover. Pull them out, match them up, routine. Oh, look out. So that's the short ones. I mean, it'll be pretty self-explanatory when you see where they come out, which ones go back. And remember I said I was gonna have to come up with some Torx fasteners for there? Oh look, we got them right here. And once again, as with the colony kits, on the Harley bolts, 
Washers are captive. We'll take one out. And that's a long one, I can tell. But as usual, on a Harley fastener, washer doesn't come off. It's stuck there. It's captive. Colony comes with washers in the package. And just remember what we talked about the last time we were putting fasteners in. Something doesn't feel right like the very first one. Stop, regroup, and try again. Blah, 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 blah. All right, I know we talked about this before. We'll talk about it again. If you're using chrome fasteners, things ain't feeling happy. That means there's probably a little bit of buildup of chrome on the threads. I just tapped one to verify it. I mean, sorry, ran it through a die. So I'm going to do another one and I'll show you the fastener when I get done doing this. A little bit, little bit of this stuff here, tap magic. Okay, see the difference? See where I didn't do it and where I did it? There's just a little bit too much chrome on here and I know what you're thinking and it's not their fault. It's just the way it is. So be careful. I just tried one of the short ones, went in no problem at all. So we only have to do this to the long ones. So I know it's tedious and time consuming, but hell, that's why we like working on motorcycles, right? Fixing things up, overcoming obstacles. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish changing all these bolts. Then we'll resume putting our cable on, okay? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get the new cable put on here. Uh, first thing we did, we put the new O-ring that comes in the package right there, like we talked about before. We lubed up our cable. And once again, it, sometimes it takes a minute to get her started, but that one started pretty easily. And I'm turning the cable, turning the whole darn cable to thread it in, because it's really the only way to do it, because this doesn't swivel. It's attached to the end of the cable. So you're just gonna thread her on in there till you get to the end and thread it and threading and threading and threading. There we go, we're almost there. There we go. Okay, now I think I said it when we were taking the cable off, but I'll say it again. Be careful tightening this because it's the threads are hollow. If you over tighten it, they break off. It needs to be just tight enough for it to seal. Like that, perfect. Okay, shove your cable up through. So you got your end sticking out. Then we're gonna take this little chinga here. Goes on the end of the cable. Then you're gonna put your ball and ramp onto that piece like a so, and then you're just gonna put that on there, the notch lined up, like a so. Oh, but don't get your O-ring stuck in there like I just did. So you can see how that all works there. Pretty simple, nothing special. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start this, this way around. And 
once it gets down there, you're gonna need to use a screwdriver in the center of that. That's what that slot's for. We're gonna go ahead and uh, once we get it down, we can't turn that anymore, obviously, because it's captured. So then we're gonna use a screwdriver in the slot in the middle of the ball and ramp and take up the slack like so, okay? And then the last part that goes on is this chinga with our spring, just slides on like a so. Now we probably ought to put the other end on the handlebar so we can adjust everything before we put our cover back on. And in order to do that, I think we're gonna have to put a grip on there so we know where we're putting our darn clutch and our new lever and our clutch delete because we're gonna get rid of this stuff. Let's grab some more parts. We're gonna go ahead and get the clutch, the grip, the lever, the cable, all the good fun stuff that we're gonna need on the left side of the handlebar installed now. Now, since we're gonna be using this nifty diff, nifty uh, LC Fab Delete, you're gonna to wanna to slide this on the bar be way before you put the grip on. So this will be the first part that'll go on. Okay. And we'll just kinda of let that hang around there because we have to determine where, where these are gonna end up on the bar. And then we've got this awesome part that we showed you earlier. And it's got a little tiny set screw on it. So this is going to take the place of the switch. Like so. Oh, we're gonna go this way, gang. So I guess what we'll do next is we'll go ahead and install our grip because that'll kind of dictate where these things are going to be. Oh, Nelly, she wants to slide on off of there. Here, we'll just snug this up a little bit. Being careful not to mark up our black bar here. Oh, that's a long-winded one there. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. Perfect. I'm going to be using a set of lowbrow customs back grips on this this job. It would have been neat if I would have liked the one that had the the extra rubber on it, but I just like these grips a lot. Once again, grips, large side's going to go on that side with the throttle control. Smaller one's going to go on this side. Uh, we might want to put a little something on there to get it to slide over the bar. Since we're out of uh, spray WD, we got this giant can hanging around here, so. I just stuck some in the end there. That should work. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. There she goes. And then, then let's orientate where it says lowbrow customs on the end. So if anyone's looking at my motorcycle, our motorcycle, lowbrow's motorcycle. They'll go, oh, where'd you get those? Oh, cool, lowbrow customs, right there on the end of the grip. Look at that. Okay, so then this, we can go ahead and loosen that up now and move it to where it's gonna end up and snug it down again. This is kind of a little tricky thing we got going on here. And we kind of got to get this right the first try. Actually, let's snug it up there and then we'll kind of, oh boy, I wish I had a T-handle for this job. Okay, so I kind of guesstimated where I'm gonna like my lever to be. I'm sure it'll probably get moved again before it's over with, so I'm just gonna snug that up for now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and T27 on these. Snug those up for now. Okay. And as discussed previously, we are going to be using the Lowbrow Customs blade levers. 
because they're black. Ah, and they're cool. Now these come with a chinga, so you can use these on an earlier style cable. Well, we're not gonna use that. We're gonna take that out. And we're gonna reuse our white barrel. Oh, here she is. So we are going to keep the little plastic bushings in. There's a little plastic bushing here. We're gonna keep those in there. We're gonna take the metal piece out, keep the bushing in, see like so. Then we're gonna reuse this because then that makes it a nice tight fit. And where's our pin? Oh my Lord. Oh, there, here it is on the old one. We need this pin off here. Oh, par for the course. Those things always like to jump on and run. And, one, oh, look at that. I didn't notice that. See this little plastic chinga? You wanna have that on there because that's like kind of an anti-rattle dealio. Some, New levers don't come with that. You have to put them on there from the old one. Okay, we're checking fitment on that. It has a plastic in there. Also gonna leave that in there. Okay, so you're gonna take your end of your cable, stick it in between those little plastic chingas, and then you're gonna take your little white barrel thingy. You're gonna slide it through there, through the cable, like a so, bada bing. Okay, and you're gonna go ahead and introduce the cable to the control. You're gonna to wanna to bring it from the end into like it at, okay? And then put your pin in. Like a so. And then don't forget your clip on the bottom in the groove. When you put that in there, push up on it. Make sure it's seated in the groove so it doesn't come out. That well, looks like we did pretty good on the clutch cable length selection. That looks pretty good. A lot of times on a stock bike, you'll find the cable routed through here. I'm not a big fan of that. We'll put some, we'll put some cable clamps or zip ties or something up to the frame here once we get everything situated. Okay, so I had the, uh, adjuster here all the way turned down. And I basically turned that out a little bit to gain the clearance I needed right there to put that through there. Okay. So now what you're going to do is I, I took the other thing that we put in back out because I needed to change this adjustment. Sorry. So now we're going to take the play out of that like so. And then we can put our thing back in now because we're done with that. Boy, this spring sure is kind of weirded out. What's up with that? There we go. That looks better. And you're going to put this back in there. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to here to take up that play. So essentially we can put our cover back on at this point. So we'll go ahead and put our gasket back on. All right, as I said earlier, this gasket can be a real bear because it wasn't a very good design by Harley. You'll see there's little tits there and this is supposed to stay in the groove and sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. If it doesn't act like it wants to stay in the groove like it's already acting, what you can do is put a little dab of grease in a couple spots on there. We're gonna do that. And this will help it. This will help it stay in the groove. Hopefully this will help it.
Oh yeah, that's better. Okay, see she's, make sure she's in your groove all the way around. That little bit of grease won't hurt anything. And then don't forget our little special thing here that we had for our anniversary cover. We'll get our new screws handy here. Let's jack her back up. It'll be a little easier to get to. There we go. Should have done that sooner. Okay, get our new shiny fasteners. Okay, we've got our little extra piece on there. Didn't think that was gonna stay there for long. Oh, goodness gracious. This thing's really dirty. And I was thinking about maybe getting a different cover, but you know what? I'm kind of cool with old good old hundred years. Look at that. Once again, last one last visual on the on that gasket. Five thirty seconds, gang. Go ahead and get those started. You'll, you'll, I can feel this, that, that little spring in the center is trying to push this sucker out. So you kind of want to hold it until you get all your screws in. Or at least two of them. Those look a lot better than the rusty ones we had in there. Okay, now we can go ahead and move over to the adjustment here. And we'll show you how much free play we should have at the handlebar. Okay, so go ahead and uh, find, put the final tighten on those. And if we did everything right, our little square gasket should seal. Oh, Nelly, look out. There it goes. Okay. Now, you got your adjuster here. Now we're gonna need a couple of wrenches. So what you're gonna do on this one, is you're gonna turn this down. This is gonna be your lock nut. So when you get your tension set, you'll lock it so it doesn't change on you. Still got quite a bit of quite a bit of play there. What you can do is you can pull your lever in, and then you'll see there's a gap there, and you can watch that gap close as you turn this adjuster. See the lever moving? It's getting closer to being closed at the top there. There, let's try it now. And there's our there's our free play. Okay, so then once you get your free play established for your cable, you're gonna go ahead and, this is your lock nut right here. See how it is there? You're gonna run this up to the top, because this is fixed. Those threads are part of this. And you're gonna lock those two together, and that'll keep your adjustment where you put it, and it won't change. And you don't have to overdo it on this. Just lock them together and give them a little done. Okay. Then you're going to want to pull your boot over your adjuster like so. And as we progress here, like I said, we'll get some, we'll get some zip ties or something on there. And that cable length looks pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with that because I just can't stand it when a clutch cable's flopping in the breeze. Uh, we also have two more fasteners here to change that we, from our kit. Uh, those are also 530 seconds. So we'll go ahead and change those out while we're here. And there's also O-rings on here. 
be it. I'm just gonna reuse these. They don't look like they're worn out. Not a problem. Don't have to have new ones every single time. The other one's stuck in the hole. Oh, shiny. Okay. Well, I guess while we're still working on this side of the bike, I guess we can go ahead and put our shifter back on along with our new foot pegs that we got. Ooh, wait till you see those. They're cool. Check out these freaking awesome MX style foot pegs our friends over at Burley hooked us up with. In keeping with the tracker, kind of do dirt tire, dirt bike kind of theme. So look at these things. You know what these remind me of? Back in the old BMX days, we had these on our bicycles. They gave you really good grip, but boy, if you hit your shin on it, oh man, that hurt. Okay, that fully adjustable. So we're gonna stick our wavy washer on first. Then we're gonna stick our peg on there next. And that lets the foot peg flop up and down. I know we don't have any shiny bolts for that, but that's okay. We'll get over it. Okay. And you'll notice there's an Allen right there for positioning it where you like it. And I kind of went this way a little bit because I kind of knew it was going to turn a little when I tightened it. There we go. Would you look at that? And let's go ahead and slap the shifter back on. Position that so that you'll be able to get your foot under it. Let's try it a little lower and see what that looks like. Maybe up one there or it's there. That kind of looks too high. If we're not happy with it later, we can always pop it back off and move it. Remove that fastener before you put it on because there's a cut on the shaft that that lines up with so it can't fall off. So if you try putting it on with a bolt in there, probably not gonna work. That should do it. Okay, so it looks like we're getting pretty buttoned up on this side of the motorcycle. Looks like we're missing a bolt here where we had our little engine guard on. We'll have to get that taken care of. And uh, we got our clutch, everything going on this side of the bar, Woohoo! I think it's time to turn the bike around. So we're gonna have some lunch we're going to turn the bike around, we'll come back after lunch, and we'll work some more. <laughs> <laughs>